friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have to talk to you about this book that I just plowed my way through. It is called Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston. I came across this when I was looking at posts from Owl Crate. I didn't get the box that this was featured in, but the cover, the exclusive cover that they had for this book was jaw dropping. It just like pulled me in and looking at the cover, even looking at the symbols on here, it kind of seems like it's gonna be something medieval. And I have to just say, I seem to love medieval young adult literature. It is, seems to be one of like my preferred genres, especially like medieval fantasy. And when I looked into the premise of this book, oh, it is that. It is a medieval fantasy young adult lit book. So I immediately decided to interlibrary loan it and I got it in my hot little hands and then I just consumed it. Like the first day I sat down to read it, I read 75 pages. Like it just, I had to tear myself away to go back to like hanging out with my husband and doing my schoolwork. So I just have to come on here and share all the details with you about it. Essentially the premise of the story is it's set in a kingdom called Eloria. I could be pronouncing that wrong. Odds are my favorite that I am, but we're just going to roll with it. And essentially it starts off with the coronation, the crowning of a new queen. However, there is sort of an important backstory about Eloria in that the king hundreds, hundreds of years ago, like in this like line of family, the king essentially acquired a crown that gives people in his family the ability to have magic first and foremost and it gives them the ability to keep their kingdom protected from the evilness that lies in the woods that surround their kingdom. Hope that sounds good to you already because that's what pulled me in. I was like, tell me more. However, the daughter who is in line to inherit the crown, there's kind of some, some problems with her family. Like she's got a jaded family issue. She wasn't supposed to be the first in line, but some events unfolded that I'm not gonna tell you about that did unfold that lead her to be the next ruler of Aloria. Meanwhile, her best friend is named Sears. Probably saying that wrong but she is a close friend of the soon to be queen. They grew up together. However, Sears is not royalty. She is the daughter of the kingdom's gardener and she is trying to be supportive, but it's a weird position for her to be in. Sears also has a secret of her own in that she has some magical blood flowing through her and she seems to be able to like cut herself open and drip a little bit of blood on flowers and they'll bloom. So that's weird, that's not usual. So again, setting it up for something great. And quickly in the first 50 pages, you get the backstory about the royal family like having an issue with the first in line, which was great. I like that it jumped right into the action. The second thing is it also doesn't take too long to build into the problem. So again, coronation, a little bit of spoiler, I think, but it will be fine. The coronation doesn't go well and the curse from the woods seems to be making a comeback and that the crown doesn't seem to be warding off the wooded evil the way it has been for the past, I don't know, 300 years. For some reason, Cerse isn't impacted by this curse some backstory there that you're going to find out about. So she basically goes on a journey to try to help figure out and stop the curse. She believes if she goes through the woods, though she's never really been allowed to be in the woods, she can find another kingdom that can help solve the problem, but she's not for certain. And she has two sidekicks. She has a loyal fox that she befriended and she has a bear guiding her. However, this is not what I'd consider a book of talking animals. What is an interesting take is that the fox accidentally gets turned into a man because of Cersei's magical blood that accidentally drops onto the fox. So it's very, very interesting. I really enjoyed this. There are two points of view that you get. You get Cersei's, who's your protagonist, and you get the foxes, which is interesting. Once he's turned into a man, we start to hear from him, which I like. I do like when I get not more than three points of view. I prefer more two and bounce backing and forth 
bouncing back and forth, but it was really captivating. I do believe from the way this ended that it's probably gonna be a standalone book, which is even better because I feel like there is not enough of a premium placed on standalone books in the YA lit genre. And I kind of get it because if there's a market for a series as an author, that's more paycheck for you, for fans, it gives them more content. But I also don't like having to constantly marry myself to so many book series when I could just maybe have a standalone book. So this is great if you're somebody who likes journeying, self-discovery, if you like medieval magic, like this has so much of that in here and I think it's a really awesome read. I know I have another book by Ashley Poston I, somewhere on my shelf. I haven't read it yet. I know that she's been featured before in Owl Crate, so I'm kind of bummed I didn't get the special edition version of this, but I'm pretty sure Owl Crate still might have some in stock, so I'll link it down below if they do. After having had it from the library, I don't feel compelled to own it because I don't think I'd read it again. I'm not a big read a book twice kind of gal, but heavily recommend this. Definitely a 10 out of 10. And if you've read it, I'd be super curious to know your thoughts. All right, guys, that is it for me and this book review. I hope that you have been enjoying all of my book reviews lately. I've been really getting my read on, and I hope to come back to you real soon with another book review. 